Hello there. Okay, so I'm doing a 24 hour reading challenge. I've never done one of these. I am using my iPhone for all my videos, so I'm gonna have to like use my watch to record like time to like, you know, to record to show like I'm actually like doing the 24 hour reading challenge. Today is Thursday, it is currently 3.30, and I'm gonna, I have six books. I don't have them, I'm gonna need to go grab them. One second. Okay, so I have all six of these books. I actually purposely picked a lot of smaller books. Uh, so the books here, I think they told out to like 1,500 pages. There's six of them. Uh, I'm gonna do, I, I'm actually pretty excited to read all six of these. One of them I actually bought off of a whim. I went to my used bookstore and it's a Ray Bradbury book. So I just didn't know, I've never read Ray uh, Bradbury. So I was like, oh well. Anyway, so, so yeah, I'm gonna be reading this book and I need these books and I'm pretty excited to get into this. I don't know how I'm gonna start it. Either I'm gonna start smallest to largest, largest to smallest, I don't know yet. Maybe I might do smallest. But yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good stack. So if I do that, I might just start out with Coraline. I'm actually pretty excited to read Coraline. I've never seen the movie. Yeah, but anyways, this is my first Neil Gaiman book I'll be reading. So I'm also excited about that as well. Anyways, so I think we're gonna get into this and it's like perfect because it's like 60 degrees outside. So I'm wearing like sweats. So this is like the perfect time to do this. I'm gonna be reading outside a little bit, reading indoors, just wherever. We're gonna start this off with, I don't know, maybe I might do the biggest book, which is Phantom of the Opera, which I'm actually kind of wanting to read anyways first. I don't know, I, I, I don't know actually. Anyways, we'll figure out once I sit down and start reading. Okay, so I'm 25 pages into The Halloween Tree. I decided to read that before I read Coraline. But I think I'm going to do that, Coraline. Uh, we have always lived in the castle. Then Rosemary's Baby, What Moves the Dead, and then The Phantom of the Opera. I think it's going to be easier to read the shorter books and then the longest book. But who knows, maybe after Coraline I might read Phantom of the Opera and then switch back and forth. Who knows? Anyways, though, so The Halloween Tree, 25 pages in. It's just a bunch of kids on Halloween, and they go to this creepy house for a trick or treat, and they're like trick or treat. So the guy, the guy's like trick, treat, and they're like, yeah, dude. And then he's like, no treat, but trick, and he slams the door shut in their face. So then you're like, oh, what's going on? And then they run to the back of the house and they see this big creepy tree that's covered in pumpkins, and they're like, it's a pumpkin tree. And the other kids like. No, it's a Halloween tree, and I'm like, ooh, that's the title of the book. So yeah, anyway, so I'm actually enjoying it. It's pretty fun to read. It's, I think it's going to be a cute little kid's book, so it's a good start for Halloween. <laughs> All right, we are back. Man, I feel so tired. I don't know why. I already feel very tired. I guess because I had to work today, and I got up at 5, and I didn't sleep very well. Now I'm doing this. I am actually about halfway through this book, and like I said, it's a really quick read, but it's just so weird. There's this guy named Pip Ken who gets stolen and now they're in Egypt chasing after him to save him and now they're in England because he's like reliving his life so he's like not human which is just interesting it's just an interesting premise but 
I get the feeling this is like more of a kids book. So like this book and then Coraline are gonna be like my first kids books. But yet again, I don't know with Halloween Tree. I had no idea what it was. I just bought it at my used bookstore because I don't know. It just looked cool and it was a small book and I figured I'll read it. It says Halloween in it, so I'll read it. But I actually don't mind it so far. Currently, it's saying at like a 3.5 star rating, but that's okay. So, yeah, we're going to get into it. Okay, so it took me an hour and like 10 minutes to finish this book. So, yeah, I got less than 23 hours to go now. Anyways, this book, I actually enjoyed it. I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It reminded me of uh, that Scrooge movie. I don't remember what it's called. It's like The Night Before Christmas. I think it's The Night Before Christmas. That sounds right. Anyways, I don't know why, but it reminded me of that movie so much. But I did enjoy it. I think it was it was definitely a kid's movie. I mean, a kid's book. But I did enjoy it all in all. So, now, Coraline. Alright, I am 105 pages into Coraline, and I am currently two hours into this, and I'm almost done with two books already. There was some parts where I feel like I could have read faster, but it's fine. I think this is a pretty solid pace. I'm almost reading a book an hour. But yet again, I picked these smaller books because I just didn't know, and these are just, you know, I just, like, for one, I just enjoy reading, and two... It's just, I don't know, I just want to read a bunch of spooky books during the month of October, so, yeah. But Coraline so far is actually pretty good. It's about this girl named Coraline who, well, goes into, like, another dimension where it's, like, everything is, like, the opposite of what's going on in her life. But then she finds out this, her mother, well, other mother, is, like, evil, which is pretty cool. I kind of like this concept. It's kind of creepy, even though I thought it was a kid's book this whole time, I'm pretty sure it's still a kid's book, but it kind of makes me want to watch the movie, so maybe once I finish this challenge, I might watch Coraline, but we'll see. I am actually liking this so far. I think right now this is a solid four-star rating. I like this one more than Halloween Tree, and this is the first uh, Neil Gaiman book I'm reading, so I actually like it, so I might read American Gods next, or maybe I'll start another small one from him and just see what happens. But, yeah, Coraline's pretty good, and I can't wait to finish it. I only got 60 pages left, and then I figured out what I'm going to be reading next, I'll tell you guys in the next part. So, different angle, because my phone died, so I gotta charge it. So, anyways, finished Coraline. I actually really liked it, like I said in the last part. Four out of five stars, I think. It's actually kind of creepy, even though it's like a 
kid's book, I think. Anyways, it's kind of creepy, and I actually did enjoy it. At the end of the video, I'm going to do my final thoughts on all the books I read, and, like, rate them. We'll rank them from worst to the best of all of them. So, anyways, the Coraline was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Next, I don't know which one I'm going to read next. I think it's going to be the Mary Shelley, not Mary Shelley, uh, Shirley Jackson. Sorry, I don't know why I was thinking Mary Shelley. I think I'm going to read Shirley Jackson's book next because I read Haunting on, uh, I read Haunting on Hill House like three years ago, and that book was really good. So. I think I'm going to give this one a try as well. It's another short one, but we'll see. I think, actually, no. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that one next. Anyways, though, it was fun. Good start. All right, it's four hours in, and I am halfway done with We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It's kind of slow and boring, so it's, like, making me very tired. But now it's, like, the halfway part where it's actually, like, starting to show things that is going to happen. Like, hints at things. So, basically, they, there's a family that live in this house with an uncle and two sisters and one of the sisters murdered the family and everyone doesn't like them well like the sister so the other sister goes to the village to buy things and now her their uncle their cousin charles shows up and it's actually interesting i'm i'm wondering how the rest of this plays out because it's i'm waiting to see like the crazy weirdness I, I'm halfway done, and so far, this is saying at about 3.5, so I'm hoping the second half really picks up and it's actually, like, good. I'll probably end up talking about the rest of this book tomorrow morning when I get up, because, oh, man, once I finish this, I'm probably going to go to sleep, because I am so tired. Anyways, though, so far, I'm enjoying it. Uh, yeah, when I finish, I'll have three books left. And then, depending on which time I left for the 24-hour challenge, I'll just probably continue reading my current read. So, yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys in the morning. So, it's the next day. I went to the gym, and I'm going to shower, and then I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to continue the reading journey. I didn't finish uh, my Cat the Castle book yesterday. I just passed out. I was really tired. So, today I'm going to try to finish that. I'm going to try to do Rosemary's Baby and What the Dead Eats, I think that's what it's called. What Moves the Dead, sorry. So, I'm going to try to finish those three today. And then I'm going to try, well, I'm going to start Phantom of the Opera. Should try to finish Phantom of the Opera. Hopefully today. If not, then we'll see. But yet again, I got 20 hours left, so I should be pretty close to it. Anyways, let's get into it. <laughs> Oh.
Okay, so I just finished We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I gave this book, honestly, like a three star because it was kind of boring. Maybe I'm missing the message. I feel like there's more to this book and I just didn't get it. So you get, like, this girl named uh, Mary Cat. That's what she was called from uh, Cadence, which is her older sister. And they're, like, locked in this, like, house. They're, like, outsiders to this village and so on and so forth. And the house catches on fire and it's just Mary Cat and her sister in this house. And everyone's, like, coming by trying to help them. But Mary Cat's, like, manipulating her sister into, like, never going out. So in my head, and I found out, like, their whole family got murdered, got poisoned by who everyone in the village thought was Cadence. And then you find out that it's not actually Cadence. So that's a pretty interesting plot. And I thought it was going to go deeper than that. But I don't know. I didn't really find this too appealing. It was boring. It was. It took me longer to read this than the first two books. So this is definitely the weakest of the three currently. It's not by any means a bad book. Maybe I just, I'm not smart enough to understand it. I'm assuming that could be it. I wouldn't be surprised. Anyways, though, next I'm going to read uh, Rosemary's Baby. So I'm pretty excited. So, yeah. All right. We are going to do Rosemary's Baby. This is another short one. So that's why I'm like, I'm trying to just read the shorter ones before I get real wild with the longer ones. So anyways, though, I'm about five and a half hours into this. So we're doing pretty good for this challenge. So, yeah, we're going to get this one done. And then what moves the dead? And then I'm going to start Phantom of the Opera. I probably won't finish it. Phantom of the Opera today. If I do, that'd be awesome. But we'll see. Okay, so I am halfway through. I just made it to part two of Rosemary's Baby. So about halfway through. I actually really like this. I like, I've always liked the paranormal supernatural, like, books. Especially because since I read The Exorcist, I just really have, like, a loving for these, like, weird supernatural books. And this book is, it's a pretty slow start. But we're just to the point where Rosemary is, like, now pregnant. So, things are going to get pretty interesting now. Especially in part two. Because there's only three parts. And part three is only, like, ten pages. So, part two is about to get real wild. But this book, all in all, is actually not bad. i never seen the movie. A lot of these, I don't try to watch the movie first. I usually try to read the books and then watch the movies. Like, that's in... I just, I don't know, I like it that way because i seen The Exorcist before I read the book. And of course, with The Exorcist, I already knew a lot of things were going to happen. And with it, I got, like, there's a lot of, like, funny, like, memes and stuff of The Exorcist. So, like, it ruined the book for me. So, like, when I read Hell House and now Rosemary's Baby and Amityville Horror, all these books are going to be so good and so new to me because they're not going to... Like, I'm, I actually have no idea what's actually going to happen with any of these. And I'm really enjoying that aspect. So, all in all, though, I'm actually enjoying this book a lot. It's fun to read. It's pretty fast-paced. I think I spent about an hour and reading about 100 pages. I'm, like, zooming through these books. I'm very impressed. Except for the last one from Shirley Jackson. That book felt like it took forever compared to, like, these three. And I don't know why. I think, like I said, I just don't think I just understood that book. Maybe. Who knows? So I just finished Rosemary's Baby. 
That was not what I expected. It was like, it was a witch cult book. And I was not expecting that. I did not at all. I thought it was going to be like some paranormal thing. Wait, it kind of was, but it was like a cultish witch book. It was actually kind of wild. Not going to lie. So now I'm going to be reading What Moves the Dead. And I'm almost to the 10-hour mark for this 24-hour reading challenge. So that's actually pretty cool. It's raining out, so it's like the perfect time to read. So yeah. Let's get into it. Okay, so I the 24 hour challenge is still going. I never recorded what moves the dead at all. So that's my fault. But I am 14 hours left. I ain't in, 10 hours left. So for the last remaining 10 hours, I'm gonna read uh, Phantom of the Opera. So yeah, but so far, all these books have been all right, I guess. I don't know how I feel about it. Anyway, so so we're going to start Phantom of the Opera. Longest book. I got 10 hours. I should be able to crank right through it. It's only 300 pages, so we're going to try and get this done. So yeah, let's do it. Hello, everyone. I am going to be starting Phantom of the Opera. It's one of those, like, uh, Penguin classic covers. You know, I think I want to start reading classic books like this. Classic, like scary books like this every year for during October. I think it'd be kind of fun. I've been wanting to read like The Invisible Man. So maybe I'll read that next year. Because it's, why not? But Phantom of the Opera is the biggest one out of the 24 hour reading challenge. It's exactly 300 pages. So I have plenty of time. I have about 10 hours left. So yeah, I'm actually pretty excited for this one. I've been seeing some people talk about it and they all say good things. So I'm like, why not? And so, yeah, I'm going to read this, and then when I'm done with this book, I'm going to rank all six books that I have read, and then tell you, you know, I'm just going to rank them all from probably least to greatest. Yeah, that seems about right. Hey everyone, so this is a little different for the ending of my 24 hour reading challenge. It's gonna be me and my car. Um, there we go. So I finished the challenge. I had about an hour left of it and I was like, yeah, that's fine. I am currently reading I Am Legend, so that I should finish that probably today. So I finished the challenge. I read all six of the books and I'm not gonna lie, I actually enjoyed doing it. Will I do it again? Yeah, but I don't know if I'm gonna do a strictly a spooky one next time. I might try to do another one where it's gonna be just everything. Just random stuff that I wanna read. And it really was nice that I got to read a bunch of books I wanted to read and just get them all out of the way. Like I said, these are all short novels and I got to read them all and just was done. It was kind of nice. Yeah, it was just nice. Some of these books I wanted to read for a while and just really get, you know, wanted to read them. Now, I'm not gonna lie, some of them were misses, some of them were hits, and that's the problem with all six of these books. Not all of them were like, wow. I think, so I read Phantom of the Opera, Coraline, Halloween, Halloween Tree. Don't know why I can't pronounce that very well. But Moves the Dead, Rosemary's Baby, and the castle why can i not remember the castle book it's from shirley jackson the worst book i think out of all of them that i read and it doesn't even mean it's like the worst one it's just i didn't enjoy it that much and it was what mo what uh what moves the castle now what moves the castle like i said i just, maybe i just don't understand it that, that's probably it it's, it's definitely was the it, it's it wasn't even bad I just, I don't think I understand the plot of the whole book. Like I said, I hope you guys comment and like actually explain it to me because I, maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand it, but that was definitely the worst one. And then behind that one is what moves the dead. I give that one a three stars. I feel like the premise was really cool, but it was only like 150 pages. So it's like, 
I never actually got to like really dig into it. Everything happened so fast. I just could not get into the book. I read that Halloween tree. Halloween tree was interesting because I realized after I finished it, it was definitely a kid's book. So I'm like, oh, so I can't really like rank it as like too low or too high, especially because I just didn't really care too much for it. So I guess I won't count that as my first Ray Bradbury book <laughs> experience because I want to read his actual other books. And with this one, I just, I thought it was fine. Rosemary's Baby was really good. I like that one. But I don't think it was fourth. I think fourth place was Phantom of the Opera. It was the largest book. And there was a lot of weird things in that book, but it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. I gave it a 3.5 or a 4 star. I don't remember which one I gave it. But, and then after that, Rosemary's Baby, and then I had Coraline. Now, I put Coraline as the fifth, and then Rosemary's Baby was my favorite. Rosemary's Baby was actually a lot different than I expected, so. But Coraline, for a kid's book, is kind of nuts. I wasn't expecting it to be so creepy and weird for a kid's book. Like, holy crap. So I never, I actually have never watched the movie. So I was like, I'm going to read the book. And it was my first experience reading a Neil Gaiman book. So both great experiences. And Coraline was just kind of terrifying. So I'm going to watch the movie now because I enjoyed it. And then the other thing is, like I said, Rosemary's Baby is definitely was the best one. I gave that one a 4.5 stars. Granted, Goodreads you can't get 0.5 stars, which they need to change that, by the way. So if Goodreads, people, if you guys are listening to this, you should change that. But Rosemary's Baby was definitely the best one of the bunch. I liked Rosemary's Baby the most. It was fun, gripping, and it was just like, I thought it was going to be a possession book the whole time. I thought it was going to be like another like exorcist book. And I realized it wasn't. It was like a cult thing. And I was like, holy crap, this is nuts. So I did enjoy that. I actually enjoyed the book a lot. And I read the book, like I said, obviously in one sitting, but holy crap, it was really good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed all these books. It's just, I don't think all of them are as on par as others, which makes sense. So to me, that's how I had them ranked. But honestly, at the end of the day, I was glad I read them all because now I got a bunch of these books I want to get out of the way. And now all I have left for the month of October is Summer of Night. And then I'm done with all my reading for the month of October already. So, <sighs> yeah, that's kind of sad. If you guys made it to the end of this video, I do appreciate it. Make sure you guys check out all my links down below. And, of course, make sure you guys stay safe, stay hungry, and tell someone you love them. And, of course, you guys gotta stay spooky. I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.